let's uh, let's go on from where we stopped. Uh, we're trying to solve this uh, this problem with the network simplex algorithm. Okay, so we have a graph on four nodes. We have one, two, three, four, five arcs. Okay, in the original network, and we're trying to solve minimizing c x subject to x equal to b x between the bounds over this network M C N F P. My b is node one is a supply for twenty units. Node four is a demand for twenty units. Two and three uh, are just intermediate nodes. They don't have any demand and they don't have any supply. Uh, <clears throat> for the time being, for uh, until for for the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll tell you the starting VFS. Later on, we will learn how to find it with two phase again, like we did in simplex. But I'm giving you the basis as I want to want arcs one, two, two, three, and two, four will be basic. And two, one, three, and three, four should be non-basic. So my spanning tree is the red arcs over there. And my uh, arcs, which are not in the spanning tree, the first arc, one, three, I want it to be zero. And the second arc, which is three, four, I want it to be at its upper bound, which is a 10. All right? Given this zero, zero, and 10, I can easily calculate the flows of the other flows so that I'm solving Ax equals to B. And apparently, my Ax does satisfy my uh, bounds. And then this is a BFS. All right, we have declared this. Now I'm asking, is it optimal? Can I improve it? Remember the cycles I just explained in the previous uh, hour. So we will check each non-basic arc and see if that arc wants to enter to my spanning tree or not. Each arc will create a unique cycle and we will determine if, that, if putting that arc is good or not by the cycle's direction. Okay. Now let's start from the first arc, arc one, three, okay? That guy is currently at the value zero, yeah? There is nothing flowing there. So that arc, if we designed that arc to enter, that means I have to send, so this is the direction because it's in the lower bound. I cannot decrease this any further. So I have to increase the flow over this arc. That means I'm supposed to send flows over the same direction of this arc. So the cycle direction is the purple thing I have drawn there. Now, shall I put it or not is determined by this. You just look at the unit change in cost, okay? Unit change in cost. You just add the costs which are in the forward ones and decrease the ones which are in the backward because that will actually tell you how much your cost will change if you send one unit from the arc one three. So some of forward arcs, arc one three will bring you a plus two. For each unit, arc one three will bring you a plus two. But arc two three, anything on arc two three is decreased, right? So arc two three will come with a minus four for each unit, so is arc one, two, because they are in the, not in the same direction with arc one, three. Anything, remember the plus thingy? When this is plus delta, these are minus, yeah? This, so this is in the reverse direction. So anything in my direction will come in the cycle direction, will come with a plus. Anything in the reverse of cycle direction will come with a minus, because that's how I'm gonna send the flow. And per unit, for one unit of flow, this will be the change in the cost. I will also decrease minus six, yeah? So if I send one unit from arc one, three, my cost will change by eight units, decrease by eight units, okay? That's nice, I want that. This is an improving direction. Then that means my initial BFS was not that good, it's better for me to send positive flow over arc one, three. Arc one, three wants to enter to the basis. I have determined the entering arc, entering variable. Now I have to determine the living variable. Is there any question in determining the entering variable? Good. Then, uh, now which variable is gonna leave the basis? If I send delta units, let me switch colors again to purple. Okay. If I send delta units over arc one, three, that means three is receiving delta from here. So 
that delta should be minus in the upper R because I shouldn't receive that much. And I'm not touching R24. So since 23 is sending 10 minus delta, 1, 2 should have 10 minus, 20 minus delta. Because if, and if you go to node 1, node 1 has 20 in his hands. Delta is going to 3, so 20 minus delta should go to 2, right? So these are the flows. Now I have to, I have to find out what delta can be, yeah? Who, whoever teaches the, reaches the bounds first. Well, one thing, arc 1, 3 can move from lower bound to the upper bound and still remain in the non-basic. Right, I was sending zero units. It's a very good arc. Send all whatever you can. Upper bound is 50. So it will be minimum of 50. Or now I look at the arcs and see how I'm decreasing them. These guys, this one can only have up until 10. Then it will go below zero. And this will have up until 20. The upper bound is 50. So my... Ratio test says, well, two, three will reach one of the bounds first. So if you want to enter one, three, and apparently I want to enter one, three to my basis, then two, three should be living. I have determined my entering variable. I have determined my living variable. Now I'm ready to draw my new cycle, which is, well, my new tree, which is this one over here. Okay, I'm sending... Let me have it here. It's easier. So this is like that, that, that. And these arcs are the bound. Oh, this is sending 10. This is sending 0. The rest, this is a 10. This is a 10. And this is also a 10. This is the new spanning tree. Any questions? We just finished an iteration. Oh, somebody's writing something to the chat, I guess. Hold on. Any questions? I can't see the chat right now. I don't know why. So if you're writing, yes. How did we determine the living variable? The living variable is determined via the ratio test. This is my ratio test. Let's look at it. Now I'm trying to put one three, which was here. I'm trying to put what is this the correct one? Yeah. I'm trying to put one three into my spanning tree because the cost will decrease. It's better to have one three. So one three is my entering variable. My living variable will be the ones in the cycle that is created by one three. So there are three options. One three can move from its lower bound to its upper bound. So it will remain not in the basis, but will send its upper bound. Or arcs one, two, or two, three, which are in my spanning tree, can leave the basis. They can hit their upper bound or lower bound. Okay? Any arc not being in the spanning tree can only be the, like that if it's in, in one of the bounds. All right? In the current solution, one, three is in the lower, lower bound. One, two, and two, three are in their no bounds, they're sending 20 and 10 because they're in my spanning tree. Now, if I want to put one three in my basis, I will again repeat, either one three will have flow, but it won't go into the spanning tree. It will hit the upper bound and remain in the non-tree non arc, non-basic, but in the upper bound. Or one two or two three should hit one of the bounds first. This is my ratio test, okay? Now, one three can go up to 50. This is my first entry in here, minimum of 50. Or what are the other arts? The ones that are already sending flow, yeah? One of them is 20, the other one is 10. Both are in the reverse direction, so none of them can hit the upper bound. All those arcs can only hit their lower bounds because I'm decreasing the flows over there. Sometimes we will have mixtures. I think, I, ho I hope I have that in the, previous, in the next slides. So one, three, what if I enter increase the flow one one three, the flow one one two and two three will decrease. All right. How far can I decrease one two up until twenty? How far can I decrease two three up until ten? The minimum of fifty, twenty, and ten is ten. So arc two three is actually hitting the lower bound because now the flow there becomes zero. 
Arc one three is sending 10. Arc one two is sending 10. So now my spanning tree is changed like this. Okay? Any questions? Now I'll see if this is optimal or not. I have two non-basic arcs, which are two, three, and three, four. And I will determine if, uh, what if one, two was 10 as well? Well, that would mean that one of them will still remain in my spanning tree sending zero units, like the general cases in, we had in the standard simplex. So yes, but you need, for a graph on four nodes, you need three arcs in your basis. So it will have zero flow on it, but it will remain in my basis, okay? All right. Now I'm checking if this thingy here is optimal or not. There are two arcs, right? Non-basic arc three, four, there is a three, four. And uh, I think the first iteration is there. Yeah, arc three, four, let's see. Arc three, four is in the upper bound, all right? That means my cycle direction should be in the reverse, three, four. I cannot increase it any further. I have to decrease its flow. So I have to send flow in the reverse direction, which is this direction. Reverse direction of three, four. I cannot increase it. So I will have a delta like this. So that three, four decreases. Now let's see if it's improving. Change in cost. Change in cost is every, the, the one in the direction gets a plus. The one in the reverse direction gets a minus. Let's see. For each arc that is in the direction, which is, let's see, one, two, is in the cycle direction. It's a plus. Two, four is a plus, minus three, four, which is five, minus three, one, two. The decrease for every unit that I decrease over three, four, my cost will also actually increase by 12. Because anything I'm not sending over three, four, I have to send it over one, two, two, four, which is more costly than one, three, three, four. That's what this thing is says. So no. I don't want to change the flow over arc three, four. It does not want to enter to my spanning tree. It wants to remain at its upper bound. That's better for me. Okay. Now let's check the other arc, two, three. We just kicked it out, so it won't come in the next iteration, but just to be safe, let's check it. When I put arc two, three, okay, uh, it's in its up lower bound, so it will increase. So my cycle direction will be in the direction of the arc itself. So anything in the direction will increase. One, two is a plus. Two, three is a plus. Three, one. One, three is a minus only. So it's eight. Yeah, I don't want that eight, uh, actually. So yes, stop. We stop. This thing you hear is optimal. Any questions? Any questions? We finished a simplex iteration. Let me go over important steps quickly. Uh, a basic feasible, a basic solution is a spanning tree. Given a spanning tree, we we'll look at the non-basic arcs, if they're at their lower bounds or at their upper bounds. Based on their bounds, we solve for X in the spanning tree. If the spanning, the flow over spanning tree does satisfy the flow balance, uh, the bounds, because we solve by using flow bonds, if they satisfy the bounds, lower and upper, then we say, okay, this spanning tree is a basic feasible solution. Now, is it improving? Is it optimal or not? We look for each non-basic arc. We look at each arc, which is not in the tree, like we did in here, and see if that arc wants to enter to the spanning tree or not. That will answer your question to Ilke. Now, if the arc, we have two options here. If the arc is in the upper bound, the first arc that I'm checking is arc three, four, all right? It is not in my spanning tree. Do I want to put it in my spanning tree? The arc is sending 10 units, which is its upper bound. So that means I cannot send anything further in this direction, right? It's already at its upper bound. 
what do I have to do? That means if this arc wants to enter to my basis, I have to decrease its flow. That's the only way. How do I decrease it? Well, this guy is sending 10 units already right here. There is 10 units in here. If I want to decrease it, that means this will send 10 minus delta, whatever, right? Well, this delta should come via here then. And that's going to be a plus delta in here. It was sending, I don't know what, 10. It will be 10 plus delta. Node 2 doesn't do anything. It's just an intermediate node. So that would be a plus delta in this direction too. Node 1, if it sends more to node 2, should send less to node 3. So here it's going to be minus delta. Yeah, that's how I will remain to satisfy the flow balance. Now, what I did here is actually, now that means I have actually sent delta units over this direction. Yeah, delta, delta, minus delta, minus delta, depending on the cycle's direction. That is then my cycle direction. In order to decrease the flow over three, four, I have to decrease on the arc one, three. I have to increase on the arc one, two, and two, four, so that I remain to satisfy my flow balance. That is my cycle direction. Then. That one, two, two, four, this, this version here is then my cycle direction. Now I have to check, do I want to do this? For each unit flow, that means for each decrease in three, four, I will increase one, two by one unit and two, four by one unit. That will bring me a plus six and plus 13 because those are their costs. And what would I gain? The over arc three, four, I will send one more, one less unit, so minus five, and one three will bring minus two. Yeah? So the ones in the direction comes with a plus, the ones in the reverse direction comes with a minus. Yeah? And the difference is plus 12. That's not good. For one unit change in arc three, four, my cost will increase by 12 units. I'm trying to solve mean cost flow problem. I don't want to do this. So if the arc that I'm checking is in the upper bound, then my cycle direction is the reverse direction of the arc. So my cycle direction is the direction that goes from four to three, three to one, one to four, right? On the other hand, if arc is in the same, is in the lower bound, like our other arc. So this arc doesn't want to enter. All right. The other arc, in my solution is arc two, three. It's already in its lower bound. Now, so in order to, for this guy to become, to be one of the members of my spanning tree, I, I cannot decrease its flow, it's zero. So I will increase its flow. That means I have to send delta units over that arc in the same direction. So that means my cycle direction is the direction of the arc itself, all right? So for one unit increase in two, three, I will have to increase arc one, two by one, and I will have to decrease arc one, three by one because it's the reverse direction. When you check the pluses and minuses according to the cycle, you see that your cost will increase by eight. So you don't want to do that either. All right? So we stop. We, there are two options. There were two alternatives that may enter to my basis. They don't want to because they will increase my cost. So I stop. The solution I have just depicted here is an optimal solution, all right? Now, okay, how do we find the starting basic feasible solution? In these examples, I gave you the three. Let's start with this spanning tree. Now, two phase then, right? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use two phase algorithm to find the starting basic feasible solution. Uh, let me clean my board because I may need that in explaining it. Now, what we do is, actually, uh, we try to come up, we try to convert, a well, make up a graph over which a feasible spanning tree is trivial. What we do is we create an artificial model. We create, we add one artificial node that will be our, um, our intermediate node, all right? And then we will, uh, we will, Link this node to the rest of the graph, all right? How do I link it? Now, any demand node 
If the node is a demand node, if the BI is positive, then our arc will be from this artificial node. No, demand node. Our arc will be from this artificial node to this node. If the arc is a supply node, then it will supply this artificial node. All right? If it is an intermediate node, I don't care about the direction. What do I do next? Remember two phase. We make up new costs in two phase. So we were going to see that our original costs are zero. Our artificial costs are one. Okay. Then, again, upper bounds. Our original upper bounds will be whatever they are, legitimate arcs. The new arcs, artificial arcs, will be infinite. So that my flow then, I will send zero in my original arcs. I have one more node. So every arc, or every artificial arc I just made up will be my first starting spanning tree. And at each iteration of network simplex algorithm, I'll kick one of them out of the basis. And at the end, I will remain with a feasible solution for my original problem. It will be clearer over an example. Let's take this example. Okay. Let me let me also draw it in, in the here. So I have node one, two, three, and four. All right. These are my original thing is this is a zero, this is a plus 20, this is a minus five, and this is a minus 50. What I do, I create an artificial node in here, node zero. Now I will put arcs. The direction of the arcs are important, though. So if the if it's a normally if it's a supply node, it will supply my uh, artificial nodes. If it's a demand node, it will demand from my artificial. Node. Anything in between doesn't matter. Let me use the same thing. So in the solution, we use it like this. So arc two zero doesn't matter. It could be zero two or two zero, but we pick it like this. So this is my Starting spanning tree. The one on the right I just draw is my starting spanning tree. All right? It's an immediate BFS. Anything? So this is a 20, this is a 0, this is a 5, this is a 15. This is my spanning tree. Since these arcs, the artificial arcs, upper bounds are infinity, it's already feasible. My original arcs, lower bounds are 0, and I'm not sending anything. Every arc in my original network will have 0 flow. So this is it. This is my starting spanning tree. Now I will check one arc at a time from my original network and try to see if that arc wants to enter to the basis or not. Let me follow what's written in there. So let's. it says consider non-basic arc 2-4. Let's start with arc 2-4. Let me pick a colorful note. So arc 2-4. Does that, is it improving? It's in zero, so my cycle direction is this, right? And the direction of the arc itself. So let's check the cost. Changing cost. Anything in 2, 4 will come with a plus, but my original costs, remember, my original arc costs are zero. My artificial arcs are minus, all right? So arc zero, it will, uh, well, I will increase it, so the direction... In the same direction, so arc 2, 4 will come with a plus 0. Arc 4, 0 is in the reverse, so it's a minus 1. And 2, 0 is also reverse, another minus 1. It's minus 2, yes. Arc 3, 4 can enter. It will improve my objective function. Now, what is the value I can put there? Let's see. I want to send delta units in here. That means this one will be a minus delta this one will be a minus delta. Nice, it's interesting. What is my delta? My delta is zero because on this arc to zero, I was not sending anything. Now I will delete that arc. Here it is. I will delete that arc. It, it becomes non-basic now. And I will add yeah. this arc to my network because now this guy is sending zero units. And I'm, I still have the same flow, right? Let me clear this a little bit. Yeah. 
Okay, this is sending zero. 2015-50. This is my new solution. Yeah? I have one less uh, artificial arcs. I'm trying to kick artificial variables out of the basis. Okay. Now it says consider non-basic arc 1-3. Arc 1-3. If I want to enter arc 1-3. Arc 1-3 comes with a plus zero. This one is a minus one. This one is a minus one. Yes, it wants to enter. What is the flow? This one sends lambda. This one is a minus lambda, minus lambda. So this guy moves, right? So um, arc zero three is going. This one becomes a five because lambda is five. And this one becomes a fifth. Oopsie, what did I do? This one becomes a 15 because delta, we have just determined that uh, as 15, five. This is my new tree then. The one in here is my new spanning tree. My new spanning tree still has artificial arcs. Remember two phase, the, the, the stopping criteria was when we let them out of the basis. All right, once an artificial arc leaves, it will never enter to the basis anyway. So uh, you can forget about them. That's what it says. Okay, next iteration. Uh, we have already done this. Now, arc three, four. Let's look at arc three, four. Let me change my color again. Arc three, four is like this. Okay, do I want that? It's in lower bound. Let's see if it's an improving direction. Change in cost. Uh, three, four comes with a zero. Fourth five is a minus, another minus, another zero. Yes, I want to do this. The decrease is minus two. Now, what is delta? I want to send lambda units in here. That will go like minus lambda, minus lambda, plus lambda. Okay? Be careful. In determining lambda, that I like this. Okay. Uh, we have to check the upper bounds too. Yeah? Uh, Arc three, four, upper bound of arc three, four. Uh, I need the original graph for this. Upper bound of arc three, four was 10. Okay. So I can only send 10 units. I can't send more than 10. But the delta is minuses are 15. Yeah. I cannot send 15. I can only send 10. So that means my arc three, four remains non-basic, but now it will have the flow on its upper bound. So I will have, I won't change the structure, but I will write, let's see. Arc 1, 3 can go up until 15. It's upper bound, let's check. What is the upper bound on 1, 3? It's 50, so it's okay. But this guy cannot have more than that. So here I will have a 10. Here I will have a 15. And these guys will be 5. Be careful. Spanning tree didn't change. Arc 3, 4 wanted to enter. It did enter. But according to the ratio test, it hit the bound first. So arc three, four is now sending on its upper bound. All right? It remains non-basic. My spanning tree didn't change. Here is my next thingy. Now we're looking at arc one, two. You need to check all the arcs. Arc one, two is here. If I want to increase it, all right, what is the cost change? Plus zero, and let's look at here. Arc two, four is another plus zero. Minus one, minus one. It's again a minus two in the tree. So yes, it was to do that. What can I do? I can send lambda. This will go plus lambda, and these will be minus lambda. Okay, one of them will leave because they're all the same. Next iteration is like this, okay? I'm sending five units over here.
five units over here. Okay. Uh, I don't have this arc anymore. And this arc is actually, even though it's in the tree, it's sending zero units. All right. And I have 10 there. Uh, I can immediately eliminate it because I just made this node up and this arc is there so that my artificial network will have a spanning tree. I just want to get rid of this arc and this, uh, this node immediately. I can do that. If this value was not zero, you can't, all right? But if it is, then you can eliminate it. Then I do have a nice starting feasible solution for my original graph. So this was 10 and everybody else is like what we have found. So there's a five in here, five in there. This guy is in the upper bound. There is nothing in here. This guy is sending 15. This is what we ended up with in here in the, in the two-phase method, phase one of the two-phase method, all right? So we check, is it optimal? There are two non-basic arcs. The arc two, three is in the lower bound. If I want to add that in, what am I supposed to do? Two, three. So the cycle direction is like this, right? So it will be a plus four, minus two, and a plus six. No, it's not improving. The other arc, three, four, it's in the reverse. So my cycle direction will be like this, right? And when you change the cost, it's not improving either. So we stop. At the end of phase one, we have our original, uh, we have a BFS for our original graph. We put back the original costs. We were solving phase one with zero costs in the original arcs. Now then at the end of phase one, we bring back our original costs and apparently, uh, the BFS in our hand is optimal. It doesn't have to be, but it is. Okay. Any questions? Here, I'll actually go over the algorithm one more time. So the network simplex algorithm. We choose a starting BFS. If you can immediately, uh, I mean, if you're not asked to do apply to phase, then and if you can see it immediately, you can start with it. Otherwise, you can use two phase to find a starting BFS. BFS is a spanning tree, which should also satisfy the bounds, lower and upper bounds of the network, all right? So given a spanning tree, you check for optimality. So you look at all your non-basic arcs, and if the guy is in the lower bound, if it's at zero, the cycle direction is itself, the, the direction of the arc itself. If the arc that you're checking the non-basic arc is in the upper bound. The cycle direction is the reverse of itself because I cannot increase that flow anyway. So the cycle direction is the reverse. And you check the um, cost change in the cycle direction, all right? Pluses and minuses. If the net change in the cost of the cycle improving is negative, that means that arc wants to change. If it is positive, stop. It's good. Your decision was nice, all right? Then depending on if it's in, if you want to enter, you look at the site, you, you find the lambda. How far can you go? The arc itself can hit the bound, like happened in the two-phase algorithm, and your spanning to remain remain unchanged, but your uh, value of the flows will change, or uh, one of the arcs will hit their spanning tree arcs can hit their upper bound, your spanning tree hit arcs can hit zero. All right. Sometimes you may have a zero that like with it, uh, you just choose one arbitrarily. Then you update your X. Uh, forward arcs increases by lambda. Backward arcs decreases by lambda. And uh, one of the arcs become non-basic. hits the bound, leaves the basis. All right. It can be the arc that's just entry, like happened in the two phase. Now you have a new BFS, check for optimality again. Go back to step two and see if the non-basic arcs want to enter or not. 
This actually finishes the network simplex algorithm. Are there any questions from any one of you?